There are many reasons to move the camera in filmmaking. It can be used to reveal more of a space and establish the geography of a scene. It can elevate action and fight sequences, evoke an emotion or a tone, or even provide an unusual perspective to a scene. To move a cinema camera in different ways requires different types of mechanical rigs. In this video, let's go over some of the common, interesting, and even unusual rigs that are used in the film industry to create motion. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform you can use to build a website for your business. The Bolt is a specialized robotic arm rig which is designed to move the camera at extremely high speeds, extremely precisely. It's built by Mark Roberts Motion Control and is the go-to robotic arm for industry-level film work. So how does it work? The Cinebot has a 6-axis robotic arm, which means it has 6 different points where the arm can swivel, rotate, pan, tilt and roll the camera. This arm is attached to a heavy base which is designed to slide along a track, which come in 3 meter length pieces, giving it an additional lateral movement axis. This total of 7 axes of movement means that it can move the camera in very complex ways, almost anywhere within a confined area. What makes the Bolt special is that it comes with software called Flare that's used to program each move that it makes frame by frame. Once a move is programmed, it can be saved and repeated as many times as necessary in frame perfect passes. In other words, it can perform the exact same motion multiple times so that each move records exactly the same image even when broken down frame for frame. This allows filmmakers to record multiple plate shots of the same take where they can record different details in different parts of the frame multiple times, then layer different sections of each plate on top of each other in post-production. For example, this is a shot from a commercial that I camera assisted on a few years ago. The bolt could be used to record two passes, one plate shot of the boy drinking orange juice, and another plate with a dog being cued to jump by an animal wrangler. In post, the animal wrangler could be cropped out and the motion of the dog jumping overlaid on top of the shot of the boy so that it looked like it was recorded in a single take. This is made easy by the Bolt's frame perfect repeatable program camera moves. The Bolt is often combined with a high frame rate camera like a Phantom to shoot slow motion because the Bolt can move at extremely high speeds. When shooting slow motion, everything including camera motion gets slowed down. This means that to shoot extreme slow-mo and still get a normal tracking movement, the camera needs to move at a much faster speed than normal. It can also be used to get a super fast camera motion when shooting with a camera at a normal frame rate. It's actually a bit scary how fast this heavy chunk of metal can move. That's why the bolt operators will usually either cordon off the area that the arm moves in or give a stern warning to cast and crew not to go anywhere near the arm unless the operators give permission. Because if this thing would hit anything at a high speed, it'd be super dangerous if not fatal. For this reason, camera assistants will usually strip the camera of a monitor, matte box, eyepiece, and any additional weight that could offset balance or upset smooth movement, or even pieces that could fly off while the arm moves and stops at extreme speeds. Another use case for the Bolt is to program it to do very specific macro moves. Using the Flare software and a special focus motor, the focus distance can also be programmed for each frame, since pulling focus at these extreme speeds manually is very difficult, if not impossible. This means it can repeat moves in macro shots, get multiple plates, all while maintaining perfect pre-programmed focus. Although you can do incredible things with the Bolt, it's usually reserved for specialized pre-planned shots only, as it's both an expensive toy to rent and because moving it around and programming it takes a lot of time to do. Another piece of equipment which is designed for a very niche type of camera movement is the Tower Cam. This is a telescoping camera column which is designed to get completely vertical booming camera motion. It is remote controlled by an operator near the base of the rig. 
Unlike a techno crane, which is more of an angled telescoping arm, the tower cam is an arm that moves completely vertically and can either be rigged from the ground or rigged from above and telescope up and down. Although the hydraulic arm of a dolly can also be used to do vertical up and down moves, the range of its arm is much more limited to around one meter vertical boom movement. There are different versions of the tower cam, but the XL can extend the height of the camera to almost 10 meters. This is a great tool for getting large symmetrical up and down moves, which is why Robert Yeoman often uses it when shooting with Wes Anderson, who loves himself some symmetry. Using a dolly for horizontal tracking moves and a tower cam for vertical tracking moves. But it can also be rigged with a remote head, which allows an operator on the ground to pan and tilt the camera while it moves vertically which is great for this kind of a shot of tracking an actor walking up a flight of spiraling stairs. It can also be used for doing fast vertical moves, capturing live events, nature documentaries, or any other application where straight vertical motion is required. Before we get into gimbals, one of the most popular ways to move a camera in recent years, I'd like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video and making it happen. As a filmmaker, you'll need to get jobs as a freelancer, and to do that, you'll need a website where people can contact you and see a portfolio of your work. One of the easiest and best ways to do this is by using Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that you can use to design a nice-looking website all by yourself by using their templates. Squarespace has lots of useful tools for creators, such as being able to host and showcase your videos. They also have members areas where you can monetize your content by selling access to goods such as video classes on your own digital marketplace. So to set up your website, be sure to head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash in-depth-cine to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Let's move on to a piece of gear that most people may know, a three-axis gimbal. This is a stabilization device that's used to keep the camera steady while capturing fluid motion. Three-axis refers to the three motorized points on the rig that counteract any unwanted camera shake. These axes control the tilt, sometimes called pitch, which is the vertical up and down motion, the pan, sometimes called yaw, which is the horizontal left and right motion, and the roll, which is the side-to-side -side camera motion. By stabilizing the camera across these three points, these motors minimize shakes and vibrations and give the camera movement a smooth, floating, fluid feeling, very similar to what a Steadicam does. Probably the two most popular gimbals on the market for industry-level film production are currently the DJI Ronin 2 and the Freefly Movi Pro. There are many reasons these stabilizing devices have soared in popularity in recent years. For one, they make it very quick to set up and adjust a shot with stable movement, much quicker than setting up and leveling a dolly and tracks. For another, their relatively lightweight makes it easy to shoot in hard to access locations where bringing other heavier gear like a crane or a dolly isn't possible. They are also flexible in their applications. For example, they can double up as a stabilized head, which can be operated remotely with camera wheels or a joystick, or they can be operated in a handheld configuration using the natural drift of the motors. Whereas in the past it may have been necessary to hire a Steadicam, Steadicam operator, stabilized Libra head and Libra head technician, now the productions can get away with hiring one gimbal technician and a gimbal, which can be switched between different rigs, including a drone. Their flexibility also extends to how they can be operated. For example, shooting from a dolly on a track locks you into one lateral line that you can shoot from while shooting with a gimbal is like shooting with a stabilized handheld rig. It can go anywhere your feet go, which makes it easy to adjust to the movements of actors changing positions during a take. However, there are a few reasons why some DPs don't like using them much. 
The camera needs to be balanced so that no undue strain is applied to one of the motors. Sometimes this is easier said than done, especially when using a heavier camera build or longer lenses. Anytime a lens is changed, it needs to be rebalanced. If a certain weight is exceeded, it may not be possible to balance it at all. Even when accompanied by a gimbal technician, these machines can give technical issues. In my experience, working with a Steadicam and working with a gimbal is like night and day. A Steadicam is simply engineered and almost never runs into technical issues, whereas gimbals almost always need to be tweaked by assistants to deal with technical glitches that pop up. Also, unless the gimbal is being operated by a second operator with wheels or a joystick, it can be difficult to get precise framing as the motors create a natural drift of movement as you move or stop, which can be hard to predict. A last advantage of a gimbal is that they can sometimes be combined with other grip rigs for a special move. For example, when I assisted on this show, the key grip came up with an overhead sliding rail system with a bungee cord that the gimbal could be attached to. This took some of the strain of operating the heavy camera away and made it quick and easy to shoot the fight scenes. Or there are special shots like this, which combine a gimbal with the final rig we'll talk about, a spider cam. A spider cam is a cable suspended rig that allows for smooth controlled aerial movement. Setting one up begins by rigging several high tensile strength cables which need to be securely anchored above the shooting area so that the cables don't touch the ground. A camera rig with a stabilized remote head is then suspended from those cables and its lateral and horizontal movement is controlled by motorized winches that are connected to the suspension cables. This way the physical position of the overhead camera can be changed by an operator called the pilot using software, while at the same time another camera operator can pan, tilt or roll the camera to change the frame that it sees. The spider cam was regularly used in films before the widespread use of commercial drones to get controlled, smooth aerial footage within confined spaces, which couldn't be shot by using a helicopter. For example, aerial plate shots which swing or fall through a high-rise city, which they could later drop shots of characters into. Even after drones became popular production tools, there are still applications for the spider cam, most notably for indoor scenes or scenes shot in a studio that require controlled aerial camera moves. For example, the shot mentioned before used a spider cam with a specially designed release. This allowed a stabilized gimbal to float from one floor to the next, which the operator could then grab on the second floor and begin shooting with in a handheld configuration. Another reason filmmakers may want to use a spider cam is for a shot which starts close to actors. Having a drone start this close to the ground, objects or actors would cause a visible wind on screen and would also be a bit dangerous. Instead, a precisely controllable spider cam could be used to start on a nice tight shot, which was then brought all the way up to a massive aerial wide by winching it up the cables. That brings us to the end of this video. If there are any other rigs or types of camera movement that you'd like me to go over, then please let me know down in the comments. Otherwise, as usual, a big thanks to everyone on Patreon for your support, and until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.